Hey, how's it going YouTube, friends and family? I hope you're doing okay. And if you're not doing okay, I hope you can take some time out of your day, spend it with me, and just take your mind off of things for a little bit. This is going to be a kind of like a life update slash weekly update of what I'm up to, what I've been doing, what I plan to do going forward. So right now I'm currently chilling in the woods as you can tell by the footage with my dog Bernie. He's walking me. I have the privilege of going into the woods today because he wanted to go on an adventure. So to bring you up to speed, I'm no longer living in Korea. I wish I was, but I'm not. I'm currently based in the United States. I'm a full-time grad student. I've been in grad school for a little close to uh, three years now, and I'm finally graduating in May. Uh, I've got three months to go. But along with being a student, I refuse to let go of YouTube because I started YouTube when I was 12 years old uh, back in 2005, and it's just something that I'm passionate about. So even to this day, here I am creating a video in the woods. This is what my life has come to. <laughs> but on that note, I want to start it off by talking about how just a year ago from today, February 2020, like we had no idea this was going to get this bad. All the craziness that we're seeing around the world. Like I legit thought that with our technology infrastructure and how innovative and modernistic the Western society is, we were going to be able to overcome any sort of pandemic or what have you. But now I learned that if there's a zombie outbreak, oh, you bet your ass, I'm going to go straight to the woods or to the mountains because now I know that even though it's 2021, if there's like a, um, a virus outbreak or disease or zombies running around, yo, it's going to spread like wildfire and we cannot contain it. And having said that, I hope you're doing okay because we're going through a freaking global pandemic. I know that everyone's mental health has been slowly on the decline based on what I've been seeing on the internet and articles and research surveys. So it's not a fun time, but I'm hoping that we can come out of this very soon. Legit, I thought last year that we would be out of it within a matter of months. And now it's been a full year since it's hit the US. Uh, it's been full blown. And uh, yeah, I just can't wait for life to get back to the norm. So moving right along, I want to talk about my current goals. I have a whole list of them, but for today's purpose, I'll only go over a couple of them, right? So what am I striving towards right now in my YouTube journey, Amos journey? Uh, please call me Amos, by the way. It's pronounced Amos, like famous Amos cookies. So I launched two new projects on YouTube, uh, two new channels. The reason being is that it's a test of do I still got it? Should I give up on this YouTube journey? Am I a has-been? Am I going to be relevant ever again? Am I even good at producing content, editing, you name it, right? I want to put myself to the test. Do I have what it takes to grow organically two new channels? Um, and the reason why I'm trying to keep it organic is I really want to test myself. Do I have what it takes to grow an entire new ecosystem, atmosphere, uh, a channel from the ground up with no pre-existing viewers, followers helping out. For now, for now. Eventually, I will spill the beans and fart like I ate a bean burrito and let everyone smell it because I dealt it. And I'll let you guys know in on the secret. And I guess the second part of it is because I have this theory, which is slowly being proven by data and metrics and the analytics, that it's to my understanding that YouTube is kind of not supporting me and not promoting my videos. Uh, meaning that the YouTube algorithm is noticing that I went through a lot of different phases and chapters on this channel that you're watching. And because of that, I have groups of viewers and followers from the different sagas and episodes that I went through. And so when I move forward to another chapter, oh my gosh, my nose is leaking. It's so cold out here. It's winter. I don't know where you are, but where I'm at in winter, it's cold. And my fingers are so cold, I can't even like move them. So if I had to pick my nose, I don't know if I even have the agility to do it. Uh, but 
<laughs> going back to where I was, because I switched directions so many times, and that's a mistake on my part. I take full responsibility. I messed up. Okay, but you live and you learn, and now I know I shouldn't have done that. Because I have viewers that have an idea of who I am in that era, when I switched or pivoted, they don't want to watch that new type of content, right? And that's been going on for the past um, 15 years or so. So I have viewers from back in the day, viewers from even 10 years ago, viewers from 5 years ago, viewers from even 3 years ago. But the thing is, um, I'm not making the same type of content that I used to in any one of those eras. And so what's happening is when YouTube promotes my video and the click-through rate is like hovering at 1%, YouTube gets a signal that this video sucks and we're not going to show it to others, we're not even going to promote it in their subscriptions feed. And so what's happening is even though I upload videos, it's not doing so well. However, in the two new channels that I started, the click-through rate is through the roof. We're talking like 20% click-through rate and it's working. So at the end of the day, I'm like, okay, so I'm not terrible as a YouTuber. It's just, I made so many mistakes on this one that this channel is dying. But I refuse to let it go because it's my baby. I grew up with it. I went through my teenage years with it, my adult years with it. And because I cultivated a relationship with the ones who watch this channel because of me, I owe it to you and I want to give back, update you and talk to you and, you know, just move forward, seeing what can happen next, right? And I feel like... Uh, I, I really envy the YouTubers who can continue to do what they've been doing for 5-10 years, right? Like if they started out with K-pop reaction videos and they're still doing it to this day after a thousand videos or uh, doing skincare or makeup and they're still on that. I respect them because I suck, man. I really suck because I go through these phases and seasons of my life where I'm like passionate about... Um, the fish aquarium hobby and I make videos about that and then I'm like ah, I don't know and then I make videos about board games and then I pivot into finance and etc I just I just go through so many stages and it's like it sucks right because that's what uh, ultimately killed my channel um but then and I also I think about it on the flip side like it's just the genuine rawness of me of like being a human of going through different interests experimenting and um yeah, in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have done that. So that's why I'm trying to separate my hobbies from this channel. So this channel, I don't even know what's going to happen going forward, but maybe I'll continue to do these, uh, do vlogs and everything. I try to do like the Korean related content and I'll still do those, but I'm not going to do the news anymore or what have you because uh, it's not working out. I was looking at the numbers, it's still not working out. So at the end of the day, I think people still come to this channel because of me. And that means I owe it to you because I don't deserve a following. But because I have a following, I might as well make videos about my life and give you updates to what I'm up to. Moving right along to a less heavy subject. Don't worry, I'm not sad. I'm still grateful that I've got it in a sense because the other two channels are popping off. Uh, whereas this one is dying and it's just like, it's a circle of life. Uh, it's just like when you think about the birth rate and the death cycle of a given population, you know, it's, it's the circle of life. Uh, there's a newborn for every person that's coming to the end of their walk of life. So it's kind of like, ah, uh, I don't know, it's, it balances out. But moving right along, I want to talk about my food recommendation of lately, of recent. So I've been on a really freaking strict diet where I lost 20 pounds uh, believe it or not, and uh, it's been transformative, to say the least. And it reminded me of how much I appreciated being in shape and not being skinny fat. Because I know with a jacket on, probably it looks like I'm in shape, right? And uh, I'm still not in shape, but even just 45 days ago, with this jacket on, people would assume that I'm in shape. But the moment that I'm naked, looking at myself, in front of the bathroom mirror, man, it was it was not a pretty scene. It's one of those like, ah, you, like you would scream. I'm sorry, Bernie. He's like, oh my gosh, are you okay? Uh, not a pretty scene. So I had to make some life changes and I did it. I lost the weight and I'm slowly pivoting the fat into muscle. Uh, huge confidence and self-esteem booster. Love it. Uh, but basically the food, right? So we're talking about food. So one food that I've been incorporating into my diet now that I lost 20 pounds and I'm slowly trying to build back up 
from a base level of being skinny. Now I'm skinny. I wouldn't say I'm skinny fat anymore, but now I want to turn this skinniness into a more muscular version of who I am. Because I want to, because I miss the feeling of being strong, miss the feeling of being durable, being healthy, being able to walk up a flight of, I guess, three flights of stairs and not being out of breath. I just want to get back to that state. But now that I'm skinny and now I'm trying to bulk up again in a healthy way, I've been eating cereal at night, which is crazy because... For the longest time, I avoided cereal because it's all sugary and everything, right? But if you do your dietary nutrition in moderation, whatever it is, you'll be okay, right? As long as you're not eating a bar of chocolate by the hour, every hour, every day, you know, that can get bad. But if you're having a bar of chocolate once a day, once in a moon, uh, once in a while, I think it's okay, uh, depending on your condition and your health, but... uh so cereal, and I've been having, I always can't pronounce it, but uh, I just say synonym, synonym, synonym toast crunch. Man, it's like my go-to comfort food, right? Some people have like their mac and cheese, their mama's meatloaf, their aunt's uh, crispy fried chicken, like whatever it is, that's your comfort food, right? But for me, man, my, every time I have that synonym toast crunch, man, it brings me back to my childhood and I love it. So I've been having a bowl of that every night and... Man, if you haven't tried it before, yeah, what are you doing? Like, are you truly living? Like, try it out. It's a lot of sugar. I'll throw it out there, so don't eat too much. I literally have like a quarter of a serving, so it's like three grams of sugar. Plus, I've been, um, I switched my uh, my milk, right? Sometimes I, uh, I was all about like, ah, organic doesn't matter, and then I went to like, all right, maybe let's try organic because I was getting sick all the time. My health was degrading, so I was thinking maybe it was with the pesticides and it wasn't it, right? I switched to all organic and it still made no difference. I was still getting sick all the time. So I switched back to normal food. Uh, all that to say, I started drinking milk with reduced sugar. Uh, it's by a company called Fairlife and it's owned by Coca-Cola, which blew my mind because when I think about Coca-Cola, I think about soda. I didn't know that they owned a milk company as well. But anyways, it's like 6 grams of sugar per cup, whereas like normal milk is 12 to 14 grams of sugar, uh, which is really a lot when I think about it. So I have like a quarter of a serving of that, so we're talking like 1.5 grams of sugar plus 3 grams of sugar from the cereal itself. So in the end, it's not that much sugar. By the way, I'm going to give you an update on the health situation real quick and the epiphanies and the revelations that I had uh, of why I was being sick all the time. But uh, moving right along, uh, not only the chicken, but I also wanted to say, uh, wait, what? Chicken? No, I was talking about cereal. The next thing I want to talk about is chicken. So, little fun fact about me. Do I look cold? My nose is running and I'm freaking cold right now. But I'm actually allergic to chicken. It's really weird, but it's something in the protein that my body just can't digest and I'm allergic to it. There's different types of protein allergies. There's people that... Um, get bit by a Lyme disease or a tick, deer tick, and they get Lyme disease and then they become allergic to meat or sometimes just beef or sometimes just pork and beef. And um, with the allergy that I have, sometimes you can become allergic to uh, the chicken protein in terms of just the meat, but there's also some people that are allergic to the egg as well. So they can't have scrambled eggs. They can't have sunny side up. And, uh... and I tried to do it, but I couldn't anymore. My nose was getting leaky. My fingers were being frozen completely. And I don't know, it was just, it was just too cold. So I came back in the car. But the good news is some people might be like, man, you're allergic to chicken. Yo, your life must suck. I don't see it like that. There's so many other things that I can eat that I'm grateful for, right? Like shrimp, I can have lobster, beef, pork. I'm just thinking about it makes me uh, salivate because I'm currently on a diet right now and uh, I can't have my meal until two more hours. But uh been trying uh, meatless chicken and it's not the greatest in the world, but I got to say the taste has drastically improved since I first tried it like 10 years ago. 10 years ago, man, it tasted so bad. Now I can say it kind of reminds me of chicken, but it's just really dry. So I think when we think about the technology of like meatless substitution, um, I think in the next 10 years, it might get a lot better. But anyways, yeah, so I've been trying meatless chicken. It's all right. It ain't the best. Uh, 
but it'll do like if I'm craving chicken because if I eat chicken it's gonna be a whole messy situation in the hospital so if I'm craving and I can't have it I guess the meatless substitution works just fine moving right along I want to talk about I guess like a lesson learned or something that I've uh, had my eyes open to I don't even know how to say it probably my nose is so leaky I'm so cold I uh, I feel stupid but for the past two months and three months, I guess three months now, I've been studying about how to thrive and how to trend and go viral on YouTube. So I'm understanding the almighty, the powerful YouTube algorithm and why so many people make clickbait, uh, thumbnails, titles, and everything. And it makes sense. Uh, knowing all of that, I am guess... I'm going against the grain because, man, when I think about this series that I'm doing right now, how I'm just talking to you and there's B-roll footage of Bernie and I just walking around, is this ever going to go viral? Hell no. This is not going to go viral. This does not have what it takes. It doesn't have the fast edits. doesn't have the ingredients for like a viral content. So I can tell you for this video series, I'm just doing it because I want to keep this rapport with the community that we've built and I'm trying to build again because um, I think it's kind of cool, right? And uh, I guess it's a different type of video, right? Like uh, this is not here to like entertain. I guess this is more one of those like heart to heart talks, sitting down with an old friend, sharing a a six dollar cup of Starbucks and you're just talking about life right I feel like that's the vibe that this probably feels like but anyways the reason why I decided to even make something like this for the main channel is because the other day I was looking at my weekly wrap-ups or like life update videos from back in 2016 and it just kind of blew my mind to see how much I progressed in five years or where I am now versus back then. And the things that used to worry me back then are not even on my plate anymore. And it just goes to show you that sometimes we think something's just going to ruin our lives. But five years down the road, it doesn't even matter anymore. And I think another vessel or variable that's kind of cool from doing something like this just talking about life my recommendations what i liked what i didn't like and a whole list of other topics like that is it gives me the opportunity and for you the opportunity for to to look back and reflect and be like wow wow and look at the growth or look at the concerns from back in the day or the things that used to make me happy right so uh i like it I like it. I think that's important because if you just make content to please the algorithm, man, you can get burned out real quick. And that's um, and that's a real thing. Uh, but for this, man, I'm not doing it for the algorithm. I'm just doing it because I want to and I want to connect with people. And uh, I don't know, is anyone else out there resonating with this? Maybe it's, it's not YouTube, but maybe it's like your school choice, career, or like say you really wanted to be a scientist, so you went to get your PhD in molecular biology and you're figuring out it's not really for you being in a lab, so you quit, and now you're trying to be like a, um, a full-time dancer, so you're doing that, and like, I don't know, can you resonate with my journey? I guess that's, uh, it's my plea to people like, hey, am I the only one that's going through all these like u-turns in life and uh detours uh, or can anyone else relate to me on this because i feel like um i don't know if anyone from vmi is watching this but i feel like a lot of my buddies from the virginia military institute like they graduated the same time i did we all went off to the military did our thing and like their path is just so clear cut and it's crystal clear of what they want and what they're doing right like moving up the ranks they're all captains now major is not too far away being an 04 uh, or I guess in the Navy, what would that be? A lieutenant commander? Or if they left the military like I did, now they're in like a civilian contractor role and like their life is pretty straight. But I feel like the route that I took is just so crazy and weird, man. From being an actor, model, pastor, business, uh, army infantry officer uh, I'm all over the place and it's um, I don't know no regrets I definitely think my life is interesting when um, I look back 
Uh, but I guess the only part that kind of makes me hesitate or pause for a second is kind of, is there anyone else that can, you know, relate to what I'm going through and are the mistakes that I'm making right now, are they going to make me have a lot of regrets when I'm old? I, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. I'm just rambling. Moving to the next topic, I wanted to talk about my health and what I did to come back from literally thinking that I was going to die, that I had cancer or something more severe. Um, it was just that my immune system was seriously compromised. Uh, what is that now? Three years ago. It sucked because during that era of my life, that's when uh, I was trying to pursue being an actor in the United States and being sick all the time ruined my abilities to perform well in auditions and uh, it, it didn't go so well. And how I was able to reverse that and fix some of some of the um, dire consequences. Because right now, I think I talked about it a little earlier, but I would say I'm like a 70%. When I was 19 years old, man, I was in the prime of my life. I was 100%. I was able to run uh, dozens of miles a week. I was strong as heck, and I never got sick. Right? And I thought about, why was I so healthy then? But then why did I get sick all the freaking time? Because I'm still young, right? And I looked at what changed my life, right? Like, and so I think of it as a, a hidden blessing, but also a curse. A curse because if I'm not working out and eating right, my body just stabs me in the back and I get sick all the freaking time. So I found out that even if I don't want to, to the day I die, I've got to work out. The moment I started working out and making those kind of changes, I immediately saw a switch in my immune system being uh, boosted and... Uh, the frequency of being sick just went away, right? And another huge variable is I eliminated uh, junk food from my life. Uh, so when I was being sick all the time, I wasn't working out, so I was getting fat. And then I was also eating candy, sweets, ice cream, honey buns, glazed donuts, McDonald's every single day. And it did a number on me. And so this goes right along to that hidden blessing or curse. I have to eat healthy. I have to work out because my life depends on it. And a quick update, I can touch my toes. I know there's some people uh, that were curious, like, yo, man, can you touch your toes? I can touch my toes only for a split second. Like I can touch it and then I have to revert back because it hurts. Uh, so really good news on that front. I know we've been going through a terrible year, but for me, I've been really happy in the sense that I finally got my health back. I don't even remember the last time I got sick. It's been like a year or two years or something like that. So just small changes, right? Eliminating the amount of sugar in my life, getting good sleep and working out just just brought me back. Um, so I cured it. You know, like I went to the doctors a lot to figure out, do I have cancer? Do I have something wrong in them? At the end of the day, I was just wasn't doing the right thing for my body. And once I started doing the right things, it's, uh, anyways, moving right along. Uh, my song recommendation I wanted to throw out there because every single time that I hear this, it gets stuck in my head. And how can you not like this song, right? It's one of those feel good, uh, tunes that whenever you hear it, you just want to, you know, it's Earth, Wind and Fire, September. It goes like this. Do you remember? The 21st night, September. Oh my gosh, every time I hear it, it gets stuck in my head for seven days. But I just wanted to throw it out there that it's been my feel-good, happy vibes song for the past, like, three to six months. So I don't know if there's anyone out there that needs to hear it, but just just try it out. Just listen to it. I know during the pandemic, I talked about how, like, 25% of Americans are unhappy, and I get that not everyone that's watching this is American. Uh, but for a sample data of a population to have one out of four people to be sad... Um, I feel like we should do everything in our control to kind of, to not let ourselves go down that rabbit hole, right? And I feel like the type of music that we listen to can have a huge impact and influence. Like if we're listening to slow, dark, depressive music all the time, that's just not going to help our case, right? And so I stopped. I don't listen to music like that anymore. Like breakup songs or songs about being lonely. I just don't. Yeah, the lyrics are good and the artists are have good intentions, but when I used to listen to things like that, man, I get more sad, more depressed, right? Uh, so now I just try to listen to happy, feel-good music, and uh, I'm seeing the the transformative differences. So 
If, even if you're not in a dark place. Earth, Wind, and Fire, September. Uh, moving right along, uh, want to talk about um, how during this pandemic, since I'm a full-time student, I have to get uh, mandatory COVID-19 tests, right? And I've had like a thousand of them so far. And I've tested negative every single time. So whoop, whoop. Um, it's pretty cool. And I have my next one tomorrow. So I'm hoping I can keep the streak going. A thousand freak, literally like a thousand mandatory tests. Um, I don't have it. So hopefully we can continue that. And I want to end the video by saying this. I know right now we're going through some tough times. And if, even if you're not having some tough times, uh, just hear me out. Just uh, just keep fighting the good fight. And uh, realize that whatever we're going through right now, this pandemic and all this craziness is temporary. Right. One day it's going to get better. I promise it's going to get better. We're already seeing people being vaccinated and um, the economy slowly recovering. It's still pretty bad. And uh, the school, career, life, relationship situation might seem dim and sad. Uh, but there's better days ahead. Just trust me on this because... Uh, 2016, man, I was watching some of my earlier weekly updates and I remember the stuff that used to make me so anxious and worried. And I'm just like, bruh, everything worked out in the end. Like, you know, and I think that's the funny thing about life. We adapt, we overcome and we're resilient. Like in the moment, I get it though. It's hard to see hope or better days. But, uh, when you look back, it's just like, damn, I overcame that. So we're going through some tough times. There's no doubt about it, but just, just stay strong. And if you're having a good time and a good life, man, spread the positivity. Man, the world needs more kindness and love. Like the last thing we need right now is for people to, to, to be mean to one another, to troll or to, to be toxic, right? We need more positive energy. On that note, I think I talked a lot. So let's end this. What did you think? Did you like this type? Did you dislike it? Let me know, please, because I don't want to just aimlessly or ignorantly just produce content if people are not enjoying it, right? And I definitely think this is not for everyone. I think this is more for people that might be into like podcasts or have the idea of like, hey man, I've been supporting you for like five years. It's, it's kind of cool to see your journey and it's nice that we can just have this one-on-one -on -one talk or whatever it is that you derive from this video. Let me know and tell me if you like it or not because... I won't, I really would like to continue to do this, right? But if it's not going to be enjoyed, uh, maybe I shouldn't, right? And uh, my apologies for not uploading more frequently. It's just I've been focusing my attention on my other two channels that are popping off. And I realize that um, I should try to balance the three. And, you know, some people might be like, hey, man, you're spreading yourself too thin, man. That's too much going on. But it's really not. The reason being is that I love multitasking and pushing myself to the limit. And the other two channels, the frequency of uploads is once a week because of the type of content that I'm making. It's not the type of content where you can upload every day. Yeah, I can balance all three and uh, we'll go from there. And if you're watching up to this point, I just want to say thank you. Like sincerely, I can't believe that I still have people that want to watch this ugly ass has been wannabe actor that never made it in Korea. And now he's just trying to figure life out like, you're still here supporting me. So I'm like, bro, shout out to you. Uh, I want to thank you. You know, even in my darkest times, I think about the people that are rooting for me that I don't even see physically. And it just gives me strength. And that's real talk. And so I just want to give back and do the same to you and give you strength, even though we don't know each other. You know, I'm rooting for you. I'm supporting you, whatever it is you're doing. And uh, I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one. Say bye, Bernie. Bye, everyone.